What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on SureDog.com. And today, from a very tundry West Limerick, we we are back with a PFL preview as the sixth um, show of the regular season goes down. And you know, it's it, it's moving night. It's the last night of the the regular season. Um, we're going to get going. It's it's shit or get off the pot at this stage for all of these fighters. So it's um it's it's a massive night for everyone involved. You know it's and and I suppose this this whole trio of cards has been um but it's more I, I think it's a little bit more straightforward for the lightweights and the welterweights this time compared to the other divisions because we had a lot of you know the divisions were kind of a lot of people. Have, Obviously, falling out due to drug test failures uh, and other things like that. Whereas these two divisions are more straightforward. A couple of people, as always, with injuries and stuff, have fallen out. But um, as I said, a little bit more straightforward, and we will get into all of that as we go. I'm going to start it off a little bit differently this week. I'm going to look first of all at the bet nods. Um, we look at them a little bit throughout the video as well. Then I'm going to look at the standings, and then we'll get into the the full preview, looking at a few of the fights because a few of these fights are, especially the main event, very very interesting. Let's look at the betting odds quickly first here before we start, and I'll discuss the actual fights when we we, we uh, get there. Then and maybe the odds as well along with that. The main event: Olivia Obamercia versus Anthony Romero. Uh, Obamercia, massive favorite, minus five four nine plus four hundred for Romero. Sadabu C, uh, the exact same minus uh, five four nine. Um, as as a few, it's weird, a few of these fights are, are all the same. Shane Burgos is the exact same as well uh, against uh, Yamoto. Uh, Celebu C taking on uh, Shane Mitchell. Um, Zavada then, uh, you know, I I looked at this price and I was like, oh, this is a little bit. Uh, this is a little bit interesting. This catches the eye a little bit. He's plus five hundred against the minus eight hundred Megamed Megamed Karimov. You know, we know we we probably know who uh, <laughs> we probably know we're picking in that one, but still, uh, uh, maybe a flyer of the week type. Uh, Umalatov again, a big favorite. He's minus six four nine plus four fifty for Na- uh, Naib Lopez, who, who again. Interesting fight. We will talk about that when we get to it. A little bit closer though for Clay Collard, Stevie Ray fight. Clay Collard minus uh, 275 plus 210 for Stevie Ray. Carlos Leal Miranda minus 225 plus 175 for Danilo Taylor. Uh, Nathan Schultz and Rahush Mafeod in very close minus 175 for Schultz uh, as the favorite plus 140 as the underdog for Rahush Mafeod. Uh, Alex Martinez and for me, maybe the, the fight at night against Bruno uh, Miranda. He is the favorite. Is Martinez at minus one fifty plus one twenty for Miranda, uh, Zersher and uh, uh, Bardsley are, are not too far apart either. Plus two hundred. Well, I suppose a little bit for Bardsley. Zersher plus uh, sorry minus two fifty, uh, and Abdullah Al Katani minus two fifty over Lamar Brown plus two hundred. So. You know there there aren't many pick em fights, and I said this has been a thing that's been happening recently in the in the PFL. There, most most of these ones, there's big favorites on them, but again, not all the big favorites have been winning, and not all winning easily as well. So, you know, sometimes you know, as someone who does a betting show every week, I know very well that just because someone's a big favorite doesn't mean they always uh, they always win. So those are your odds for the PFL card. Uh, this weekend it's on on Friday night it's on the Overtime Elite Arena Atlanta Georgia uh, June 23rd and here you're standing so welterweight first of all uh, Megamed Megamed Karimov leads the way but himself Megamed Megamed, uh, Megamed uh, Umalatov and Carlos Leal all on 6 points after a win Sadabu C on 5 points as well uh, and Naib Lopez is on 3 points so they all have wins there coming in and all are, are, are looking good and set uh, the other lads with fights there Shane Mitchell Jara Al Shalawi David Zavada Daniel Taylor and Ben Egli all on uh, zero points and uh, Zach uh, Jusola who hasn't had a fight also obviously on zero points the lightweights, then, how that's looking as we speak. Um, very, very, very tight. Very, very, very tight. Five lads on three points. Obamercia, Collard, Miranda, Schultz, and Manfeo. Uh, and the other lads that have had fights but are on zero points. Martinez, Burgos, uh, Yamoto, Stevie Ray, and Amid Amir, who is out of the tournament, replaced by Anthony Romero. So, God, if you look at that... 
this, the, the welterweight, as I said when I started this, it's it's a very open night and anyone can do anything. More so in the lightweights than the welterweights, though. Because, like, if you think about it, Obama Mercier is on three points. He and top of the league, he could he could be out of the playoffs if well, my my math might be the best, but I I think he he could he could be out of the playoffs. That's a good thing about the BFL as well. It's hard to understand exactly who's going to go through it all, but then when you you know you know who's going to win anyway. But when you go in and you're there watching it on the night, it's like oh well, this he needs to win in this amount of time. He needs to, there's a bit of pressure, a bit of editing. It's kind of you know it's fun, it's fun, and um, the lightweights. Whew, that's a, a kind of a killer be killed type of position. All those lightweights find them in, so we'll uh, we'll see how that works out on um, on Friday night. Let's get to the card and let's talk about uh, these matchups because there's some very 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 fun fights in here that I like. And like uh, we, we talked about the prices and maybe the prices are a little bit off. And I think for this Oba Mercy Anthony Romero fight, that price of plus four hundred for Romero. I, I think is is certainly a little bit off on my reckoning anyway because I like Romero an awful lot. He's a very very good fighter, twelve and one in his career. Um, I watched a few of his fights. You know he fought a lot on on Fury FC, which is on um, on UFC Fight Pass, um, and like he's I suppose he's flying knee over uh, uh, Ken Glenn is is a standout uh, on that an absolutely beautiful shot, but. He's, if you haven't seen him fight, he's a very, very, very good fighter. He kind of, I, I, I think he fights in a style, right, that not many people actually do, but it's when they do, it's very effective for MMA. And that style is like the, I'm going to call it an, an orthodox karate style. Now, it's not orthodox karate, but it's like an orthodox boxing style, but out of the karate sense. And that might make no sense. <laughs> but let me try to explain. Usually, when lads fight out of the karate sense, right? They they're a wonder boy, or even like, do you know what? Maybe he's a little bit like Sahuda because Sahuda kind of does this a little bit as well. But you know, they they fight, they fight like they want to kind of fight with their, you know, with question mark kicks, and they want to spin, and they want to like, you know, do wild karate techniques. But I. Uh, you know, Leo Machida, you know, count you with speed and all that. Um, I think Romero's a little bit different and a little bit Cejudo like. He fights in more of a, a technical way out of that stance and he uses a stance to his advantage. Because I talked about, okay, maybe he doesn't look for the, the speed like other lads do, but he is very athletic and very fast and very strong. And. I think it really, really, really benefits him. And it, it's hard to look at him. And, like, the weird thing is he's fighting OAM, which we, we'll get to in a second. But when you talk about, uh, I suppose, orthodox uh, technical fighters, there isn't many better than, than OAM in, in the world, whether you're in PFL, UFC, Bellator, wherever you are. <clears throat> you know, that's that's kind of, I suppose, his gig. That's what, what he does. Um, but just on, on Romero a little bit more, you know, the back leg high kick is something that is thrown from the stance, so it allows it, you know, the, the karate stance allows it to be more of a weapon because it's coming from more of a whipped stance, I suppose, rather than just your straight up, you know, Muay Thai kickboxing, not necessarily boxing, but you know what I mean. Uh, so it, it's more of a weapon. And his ability to counter as well, like he does counter more of a, it's more of a boxing counter. He loves to counter with that right hand and hits very, very hard with it. Um, and Oba Mercier Din, on the other hand, like is he's a guy, honestly, watching his recent fights, that's he's a very easy guy to analyze after the fight and before the fight as well, to be honest, because he will fight you whatever way he needs to fight you. So if he can fight you and 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 you know, do you know what the, the big thing about this, right, is a lot of lads can do that. They can fight you whatever way they need to fight you. But it's gonna be all out pressure or all about all out countering or all out wrestling. Upper Mercia can kind of do it all and does it all, but not in a big change from his mean, if you wanna put it that way. If he needs to pressure you, it's not gonna to look totally different for him countering you. You know, he's very, very you know, very set as a fighter. You can tell that he 
probably spars an awful lot, but also is very intelligent in the way he thinks about fighting and all of that. Like he's he's one of those guys who is just well prepared. Like, well, very, very well prepared and a good fighter. And, you know, I don't, I don't know does he have the physical gifts of someone like Romero, if I'm being honest, right? But his intelligence and his stick to if you want to use that word, uh, in in what he does is, is very hard to beat. Like, in my opinion, there, there's, there's guys who are champions. Or look at Leon Edwards at the moment, like, who are just very good at being well-rounded fighters who cannot be exposed in any area and it'll take you to a massive place, you know, if you are that good at it, where you can't even be exposed against the top, top guys in the world. Now, is Oba Mercier that yet, like, the, would the top, top guys in the world not be able to expose him at lightweight? No, maybe not necessarily, but he's getting towards that, you know, and I think definitely in, in this group in PFL, He's very well able to do it. Look, we saw it against Burgos. When, when that fight was made, I was like, I was, I couldn't believe it, to be honest. <laughs> I was like, they signed Burgos. They seemingly paid him a lot of money. You want to make him the next guy? And you give him OAM, first of all. It's like, oh, I'm not sure that's the best matchup to give him. But um, I I do, look, if I'm giving my pick for this, I'm going to pick Aubame Mercier. But... I wouldn't at all be surprised if Romero won this. Like, this is his, you know, it's his, his nickname is the genius. This is his first big uh, opportunity. Look, he, he fought in the, the Challenger Series and he won there, absolutely. But this is the, the big, big, big one. Um, and I think he has the ability to beat a lot of these guys. Now, the problem is he's fighting Oba Mercier, who is the best guy in that division, right? So... <sighs> If it was, if it was, let me look at the standings. If it was Claire Collard, who would I pick? I'd probably pick Romero. If it was Bruno Miranda, oh, that's a bit of a tough fight. So maybe, maybe not. You know, Schultz as well, a bit of a tough fight. I think I'd pick, pick him to beat Manfeo. I think I'd pick him to beat Martinez, even though I like Martinez. I actually think he might beat Burgos as well. Like, I, I think, I, I really think Anthony Romero is a very, very, very good fighter. I like him an awful lot. It's just this matchup is going to be very tough for him. Now, one other thing, just before I, I leave it here. Um, he's very good on the ground, you know? Very good uh, BJJ. And if you look at his record, he's only one submission win, uh, does Anthony Romero, which is, I suppose, if you look at it on the face of that, you're probably thinking, oh, maybe he isn't the best jiu-jitsu guy in the world. But God Almighty, a couple of fights I watched of him, he seemed very good on the ground, so... That's definitely another part of it. I think if the fight does go to the ground, he's, he seems to be dangerous enough off of his back. Um, he's, and not even just dangerous off of his back. I think he is very good if he takes you down or if uh, he lands on top at actually, like, taking the back or taking, you know, uh, taking good positions for himself. Very good in that in that realm as well. So I, I do think it's one that Oba Mercia won't have his own way on, you know, unless there's a big knockout or something early. But um, yeah, like it's, it's a fight. I think a lot of people look at on paper and go, okay, he's a massive favorite. He's an unknown guy kind of coming in here. Oba Mercia is just going to walk it. And he might, because Oba Mercia has that ability. Like Oba Mercia has the ability to kind of, to, to, to walk fights against very, very, very good guys. So could he do it against Romero? Absolutely. But I, I, I just fancy Romero to put on a bit of a performance here. I, I think he will. Um, the core main event, I think, is probably the opposite, to be honest. Um, would I fancy Shane Mitchell to put on a performance against Sadabu C? Probably not, no. Um, watching a few of his fights... Look, we if you watch a few of Shane Mitchell's fights, you know what he's about. He is looking for that big power shot, you know? Fights in a slow pace. Uh, the one thing against Sadabu C as well. I was watching one of his fights. Let me just pull up the, the name of the guy. Uh, he was fighting. Um, uh, oh, God. Was it? Was it the low? I don't know. It wasn't the Lopez fight. It was oh, Jason Radcliffe, maybe. I watched a few of his fights. But actually, in two of his fights, Radcliffe was definitely one. It was another fight as well. When guys are a little bit taller than him, he really, even though he won that fight, but he really struggles with the range. Um, and when you're trying to land that one big fight, uh, one big shot, sorry, struggling with the range is, is always going to be an issue. 
it's oh, it's it's always going to be an issue when you're like the slower pace type of guy who wants to you know who wants to get inside and land a one shot and then like wait and land another big shot and then or land the one big knockout shot and that's it when a guy's keeping you on the outside with tapes or with jabs or when it gets inside and he can tie you up as Sadabusi is well able to do it's going to be very frustrating and you've seen Mitchell's fights before he gets frustrated in fights like that um yeah I find it honestly I find it very hard to see him having a chance against Sadabusi but look I said the same thing a couple of weeks ago about, about Brendan Lachnab but what a run Sadabusi has been on <clears throat> absolutely amazing you know he came into the PFL back in Jesus it's it's God, it's a long time ago now at this stage. It doesn't feel that long. Uh, 2018. And, you know, he didn't have the best of times in the first um, in the first season or even in the second season. But, like, in his last few fights, Al Shalawi, Danilo Taylor last year, uh, Carlos Leal Miranda, Rory McDonald, as we all famously remember. Um, you know, and he had lost before that to, to Ray. Uh, actually, he drew Ray Cooper. He lost to Magomed Magomed Karimov, and he lost a few more as well. But, I, I think, like, that ability, uh, you know, it's funny because Mitchell struggles against Lint and the, the ability to use Lint, and I think what has changed for C is that, is his ability to use his Lint and be confident in it, and be confident in maybe fighting a slower, more, you know, coordinated pace now against uh, Al Shalawi last time out, actually. I think he upped it, and I think that confidence might have gone to another level. So, like, the, it, the one thing I would say would be interesting with C I don't think in this fight, but later on in the in the in the semifinals and the final, I wonder. I wonder will that new and we'll see if he has that newfound, I suppose, more attacking realm to his game now. Will it benefit him against the best fighters, or will he be able to adjust and go back to fighting the more, I suppose, coordinated pace? Because that's to me what made him. Um, great that made him the champion that coordinated pace and you know winning the decisions is no problem you're winning the money you're winning this if he if he is more confident and it benefits him he could start blowing these guys away but if he's too confident and doesn't fight to his strengths it'll bring guys closer and give the guys the ability to beat him but as i said i don't think that's for friday night i think it'll be a pretty straightforward win for sadabusi in that one uh then we have a massive fight for Shane Burgos uh, in lightweight. Sadabusi, obviously, a welterweight. Oba Mercy, a, a lightweight. Now we're back to lightweight for Burgos versus uh, Yamoto. Um, I watched a bit of Yamoto, and obviously in his um, uh, in his last fight, he fought against uh, Clay Collard. In, uh, lost the decision in that one, but, you know, a competitive, fun fight, I would say that one was. Um, uh, honestly, you know... An interesting guy to look at. You look at again, right? And this is even more of more so than than Romero because Romero is very much a, a striker with, with good BJJ. I would look at Yamoto and go, Jesus, this guy is. You know, you watch a few of his fights and you you almost go, Oh God, this guy is a, a, a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu artist. And you look at his record out of twenty one wins, he's only four submission wins. Now, there's probably a few ground and pounds in there and TKOs in there with that as well. But you get what I mean, like. He's almost a BJJ guy, and you know some of the rules that he was fighting under as well were a little bit different. And you know, I th- I think a lot of the matchups he was in as well were kind of very one sided in terms of ability. Like he's six draws in his record, so you know you can take that uh, at face value for somewhat. But uh, I. I look like you look at his style and you take uh, my my notes on his style are like BJJ guy who tries to be a relentless wrestler and uh, unfortunately for him his jujitsu is better than his wrestling I think but his wrestling is not bad but he will pull guard he the problem with him is well he does tire himself out a bit but in the clay collar fight he didn't look that tired and he was striking for the whole matchup but kind of when he does pull guard and yeah, and does wrestle. He does tire himself out a bit, but that's kind of where he wants to get the get the fight too. So you know, it's an interesting one to see how he fights. Very game though, so game. Um, and I think this is a tough matchup for Burgos, and way tougher than the those betting odds that I read out at the start suggest. Minus um five four nine for Burgos plus four hundred. 
Like Burgos is a better striker than him and a classier striker and should be able to beat him, right? Clay Collard's a good classy striker as well and, and did beat him. And I think, look, I think Burgos will beat him in a similar way, if I'm being honest. But he he might be able to make it a little bit harder on Burgos even than he did in Clay Collard, you know? And, you know, I'm somewhat, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe I've convinced myself with some of these underdogs to play him up a little bit. But no, I, I don't know, I just... I just think he's going to make it hard on Burgos. Like, there was a fight last week on uh, on Bellator, Richie Smullen fight, obviously my my uh, countryman here uh, against uh, Hizriev, and Hizriev won the fight. And he won all three rounds, but Smullen didn't make it easier for him for one second. Every time he got taken down, he was either elbowing him or trying to get back up or looking for a submission on defeat. He was taking strikes, but he was hitting him back. Every he was just making it tough for uh, never gave up for a second. If his opponent had given up, he would have beaten him. Type of thing, right? And that's what this fight is to me. Uh, I think Yamoto is just a guy who will not give up, who will make it tough. If you make a mistake on the ground, he'll submit you. If you tire on the feet, he will beat you there as well. Like, uh, I, 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 and you know, he's, it's a weird one, but he's almost more dangerous when you're winning if the fight goes long than if he's winning. I think he struggles a little bit when he does get it to actually where he wants it to, to be, as a, I mentioned earlier. But look, Burgos a very good fighter. He needs to win this fight as well after losing the first one uh, to get through, and I think he probably needs a finish as well. Like, I will say it again. I think the classier, more technical striker is definitely going to be Burgos. And if he can show that early and land some big heavy strikes, maybe he'll be able to get the finish there, and all I talked about there will be null and void and out the window, so if you're Burgos, that's probably the way to go, honestly, and um, I, I think that's what he'll do, I will pick Burgos, so uh, I'm going for Oba Mercia C and Burgos, the, the big favourites in the uh, the opening uh, fights there. Mega Mid, Mega Mid, Karimov Din, and David Zavada, um, a very interesting fight, look, David Zavada is, is a knockout artist, um, uh, 12 of his 18 wins have been by knockout. You know, not on such a great run lately. Last three of his last four, only winning one fight over an octagon. Uh, he lost to Carlos Leal, obviously, coming into PFL. Uh, he lost to Morona Nemiev in, in the UFC before. Uh, you know, he beat Babakar and Megamedov before that, but then lost to Li Jing Liang and, and Roberts as well. Um, you know, Megamed, Megamed Karamov is going to be a different type of matchup for him he's on a good run now he's only lost one fight in you know in since god was a boy in early since back in uh god how long is it since back in 2015 now he's beaten the likes of uh bojan velikovic a couple of times beaten uh, ray cooper beating chris curtis curtis melinder sadabusi danilo taylor glacian he's beaten them all um and you know with uh megamed karimov he can do it in all areas. You know, he's 12 knockouts and 9 submissions, 10 decisions. So he can do it whatever way he needs to do it. Um, and, I, you know, when, the, when I, I read out the odds at the start, <clears throat> uh, which were plus 500, minus 800, I, my only thing was, like, a guy that can hit as hard as Zavada being plus 500 is, uh, is always a little bit tempting. But when he's fighting someone as good as Magomed, Magomed Karimov, probably a little bit less so. So, look... I, I actually think Megamed Karimov will probably win this on defeat. Um, but if he needs to, he can take it down. And I think he will take it down. Like, he is... He's one of these fighters who is so good on defeat that it opens up what's best about his game in the wrestling, you know, at times. You know, so it's... It, it, if he doesn't kill you one way, he'll kill you another, you know? And I think that's the problem for Zavada. He just won't be able to get striking together. Let's say if he was a winner, he was landing a big shot. Like, he'll have to land one and knock him out. Otherwise, it's going to be Mega Man, Mega Man, Karamov. And, yeah, that's definitely my pick in that one. Um, Mega Man Umaladov then against uh, Naib Lopez Miranda. This is a very interesting fight. Like, Lopez is a good wrestler. Very fast striker as well, but I think he likes to use his striking to get to the wrestling. Very attacking. Um, and nobody's done that to Umalatov, really, right? Umalatov, as we know, strong in the clinch, strong wrestling fights out of ATT, uh, like uh, Mega Mid um, He just picks at lads on the feet. Just, like, you know... Fo side foots their shin jabs them up a little bit doesn't throw loads and lads are afraid to do anything 
right? Because they know he's just going to take him down. Like, Lopez, to me, is a lad who's not afraid to attack anyone. He will go at you uh, and attack you. And no one, no one that I've seen in, in recent years, anyway, has done that to him a lot of. And how will that work out? Like, <laughs> I, I'm probably not too well, <laughs> if I'm being honest, I think a lot of. We'll probably, um, we'll probably end up taking him down and destroying him. But Lopez... He's a very good wrestler too. Let's see how good of a defensive wrestler and how good his defensive jiu-jitsu and how good his defense of the, the big ground and pound is. But <clears throat> I don't think he... Again, I, I think this is another one where he's not without a chance. I think he's a very good fighter. And um, Umalatov, though, is just a different level. He's just a different level. I said earlier the fight at night here for me is probably um, Martinez versus Miranda. But the other one... Um, I think we look at maybe the two of these together, Clay Collard versus Stevie Ray. Very, very good fight as well. Just first of all, and, and Collard versus Stevie Ray. So, like, Collard, as we know, came over from, uh, well, obviously came over from MMA to boxing, then had a good stint in boxing, came back to MMA. And, uh, you know, he's had some wins and some losses since and some very good wins. Um, but he's more of, you know, more of a well-rounded MMA fighter than that was just, but his boxing technique has just improved an awful lot since. And you think against Stevie Ray, that's the way he'll want to fight. But Stevie Ray is a very good boxer as well and a very good all-around fighter. You know, Stevie is he's brilliant on the ground. Um, you know, he's caught a few lads in PFL, Anthony Pedersen and more as well. Um, on he, he's kind of, he's, he's modified, the, what do they call it, the Glasgow Twister or whatever, <laughs> whatever they call it. Um, just a very good, well-rounded fighter, and you know, he made a great um, he made a great run last year. Came up short in the end against the um against uh Obama Mercia in the final, but you know, beating Pettis twice, beating Michael Johnson before that. I think he showed how good of a fighter he actually is. Um, and Clay Collard will be another big name if he can beat him. You know, he'd be in very much another big name if he can beat him. I think the, the thing about Clay Collard is now he's probably the oldest 30 year old around. <laughs> he's had, there's been a lot of miles on that clock um, with what, 32 MMA fights and how many boxing fights as well. God almighty, it's, it, it does seem like Clay Collard's been around for an awful, awful long time. But, you know, as I mentioned, he looked good against Yamoto last time out, beat him. Um, and, like, I'm, I'm split on this one, really. I'm split. Maybe I'll maybe I'll give you my pick on the betting show for this one. We'll and we'll win that. We'll we'll see if that price grows on me. But toss of a kind there for me in that one. And in the Martinez Miranda fight, again I think another toss of a coin for me. Anyone who listens to my PFL previews know I'm a big fan of of Alex Martinez. Just a really good fighter. Um, you know, fights out of a kind of the karate stance as well, and may, maybe a little bit less, but. Loves to throw the kicks, spinning kicks, jab, good technical striker. Miranda fighting Nova and Yao, uh, fighting out of Nova and Yao even. And he's all about pressure and power. He will come at you. He will try to land those big shots. And when you look at that price of minus 150 for Martinez and plus 120 for Miranda, I think I would nearly lean Miranda on that one. I, I just think that pressure might be a little bit too much for Martinez. But we've seen Martinez in the past. He does have the ability at times to fight a more defensive uh, type of game. And um, if he can do that and frustrate Miranda, you could see Miranda not necessarily gassing, but getting a little bit tired uh, and struggling with that one. So, I, yeah, I, I, uh, that's another one. I, it's, a, it's a real toss of a coin for me. I, I just picked Miranda two minutes ago, and I'm thinking about picking Mar Martinez now. But again, again... Uh, you make the pick. <laughs> you make the pick. No, but I'll go, I'll go with a. I'm gonna go with Miranda. Um, the other, I suppose, big lightweight fight then is uh, is Nathan Schultz against Hausch Um And you know, last year when I was talking about Schultz, I was kind of thinking, you know, he had a tough year in 2022. Or sorry, the start of this year, I was like, he told. A relatively tough year in 2022. You know, he lost uh, in 2021 to Martin Hell, but didn't last to uh, OAM. You know, he didn't get to the, the finals, fought Jeremy Stevens and won it and fought Held and got, and got the win back, you know. But then he came back and he beat Stevie Ray, and I was like, well, 
okay, that's a that's a kind of a that's a good win there. And Hausch Mafeo, I suppose, is is on the same sort of uh sort of run. He had some unbelievable wins. Like he beat Clay Collard, like Rob's above Anthony Bettis, Don Madge all in a row, ended up losing to Obama Mercia, which is no shame in that, but then came back and beat Alex Martinez here as well. So look, I probably I, I'm a big fan of Hausch Mafeo. And uh, I'm kind of amazed that they haven't fought before. Uh, you think they would have, but no, they, they haven't. Um, I'm going to go with Nathan Schultz. I think maybe a little bit more well-rounded. I think maybe the wrestling might be the difference here a little bit if he can win that. Um, and I would nearly, do you know what? I'd nearly say the same for Carlos Leal against, um, against Danilo Taylor. You know, ugh. You see his recent fights, like the lads he's been struggling with, the likes of Sadabusi. I don't know if the Nilo Taylor can do what C does. Like he's beaten Ray Cooper, beaten Zavada, and a few more as well. The Nilo Taylor, you know, he's been on a good run as well, I suppose. Be- well, before the the last few, you know, he had beaten Joseph Reno, you know, back in 2022, and he won a few more fights to get in there as well. But look, he's just come up against the best guys in the PFL. Mega Med, Mega Med, Karimov C, and Umanadov. You know, he beat Rory McDonald in the middle of that. But yeah, I have to lean, lean, lean towards Lille there in, uh, in that one, to be honest. Um,. I, I think I'm going to go in, in the last three fights then as well. You know, Al Sh- er, Gerald Shalawi. I've known about him for a, a long time because, you know, he fought back in the day in Cage Warriors back in 2013. And I, I remember I was talking to someone about him and he was fighting in Brave. And then he, when, when he uh, signed for... Um, uh, signed for the PFL, and they were saying like this guy's been around for a long time. You know, if you if you look at his record as well, one of the standout wins is everyone's talking about the uh, the Lazy King. You know, he's uh, he's only one loss, and who's that loss to uh, Al Shalawi? No, he's a win over him as well. But pff, on his day, he's very, very, very good. On his day, he's really good. Like he's a lot of finishes, twelve finishes out of eighteen wins. You know. But he just, he hasn't shown it necessarily in, in PFL yet. He was on the Challenger Series one, he beat Gless and Thibaut, but knocked out quick by Umaladov, knocked out by, by Sadabusi as well. Can Solomon Rinfro do something different here? Um, you know, this is his PFL debut. He's a guy, you know, who, watching a bit of him, he's not the biggest finisher in the world, you know. Um, 60% of his wins have gone to a decision. I, I don't know. I, I I have been kind of changed from picking against Al Shalawi to <laughs> or sorry, picking him to picking against him and now I'm gonna go back to actually pick him. I think I am. I think I'm gonna go back and pick him. Um and in the last two showcase fights, I'm gonna go with uh uh Zercher who's the five and oh and uh, you know who has um uh, you know, no knockout yet, but a lot of submissions, and you know his ground game is very, very good as well. Fighting out of extreme couture, so I'm going to go with him there to get maybe the submission, and I think um, Al Katani as well will win the the opener. So, yeah, there you go. Those are my. I'll give you quick picks again there before the end because people are always giving out. Who'd you pick? Yeah, in the middle. I'm going over Mercier. I'm going with C. I'm going with Burgos. I'm going with Magomed Karimov. Oh, I'm going to go with Umalatov. Who am I going to Connor and receive your Mm, said I'll leave it for the betting show I'm going to go I'll go with Stevie Ray I'll go with Stevie Ray I will get a bit of the Celtic bias maybe But I'll go and I'm going to go with Carlos Leal and Nathan Schult um, I will go for Bruno Miranda as the underdog And then Shalawi Zercher and Al Katani Those are my picks PFL coming at you Regular season number 6 June 23rd Friday night uh, tune in, it is on uh, ESPN Plus over in the States, the zone here in Ireland, and check your uh, local listings around the world. All right, I will leave it there. My name is Sean Sheehan for Sherdog.com, and I'll see you all next time.